Hi there. In this video, I'm just going to show you how to plot a linear function by noticing what its slope is and what its y-intercept is. Now, first of all, a linear function will always be of this form, where the output y, or f of x if you prefer, is equal to, there'll be an x in it, and the power of x is, is just 1. But it could be multiplied by some number, in this case m. m is the coefficient of x, so m in fact is the slope of the function. So the function reads y equal to m times x plus some other constant, and the constant could be any number at all. It could be a plus number or a minus number. <clears throat> For example, let's say, well we don't need to write it as y, we can write it as f of x equal to 3 times x plus 5, for example. Okay, in this case, the coefficient of x is 3. That gives us the slope. And the 5 is what we get if x is 0. So in other words, if we write f of 0, we substitute in 0, and the x term disappears, because 3 times 0 is simply Please 0, and we get 5. So f of 0 is 5, so that gives us the ordered pair 0 and 5. Now I'll demonstrate how to plot this, the space here to do it. Let's go like this. And we have 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So this point is clearly on it, 0 and 5. And we also have a slope of 3. Now, what does a slope of 3 look like? Okay, well, we need to put in our x-coordinates. So let's say this is 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, and so on. A slope of 3 means that if we go across 1, we go up 3. So that means up to this point here. So this point will also be on the... Uh, linear equation, the linear function. And we can we can show that, we can verify that by getting f of 1, which is 3 times 1, plus 5, which is 8. So 1 is mapped onto 8, which is this point here. To get the next point on the function, you go across another 1 and up 3, and that'll be here, which will be 2 and 11, and so on and so forth. So also this point here would be on it, and you can plot your linear function as a straight line going like so. Okay, um, let's just take one from scratch and let's see how easy it is to plot. Uh, let's say g of x is equal to, let's say, 4x minus, let's do minus, minus 11. Okay, in this case the slope is 4, that's the number before the x, and the y-intercept is minus 11, so I want to go down to minus 11 here. There's minus 11. So that point is clearly on it, 0 and minus 11. And our slope is 4, so we need to go up. We go Well, we go across 1 and up 4. Uh, let's do something slightly different here. Let's make this 1 and a 2. So across 1 in this case means 2 squares and up 4, we'll go to here. So across 1, this point here is on it, and that's minus 7, and then we go across 1 and up 4, across 1 and up 4, so all of these points are on this straight line. So in any linear function, the two 
points we need, the two pieces of information we need are the slope and the y-intercept. Once you have those two, it's very easy to sketch them. Well, when I say very easy, well, perhaps we need to look at another couple of examples. Let's go, I don't know, h of x is equal to a third x plus, let's say, 2. Okay, this time our slope is a third, which means we go across one and up a third. Okay, is there a better way to look at this? <clears throat> For our slope, which uh, I have here in orange, sometimes it's given as a fraction, okay? And uh, let's look at it as y over x. Uh, the change in y over the change in x. When we saw that the slope was, say, 4, that looked like, oh, hang on, that looked like y was going up 4 as x went across 1. We could have written that as 4 over 1. When we said that the slope was 3, let's say that's 3 over 1, it's a slope of 3 is to 1. Or we could have said maybe 6 is to 2. So if we had gone across 2, we'd have gone up 6. Now if our slope is a different kind of fraction, then we're going up 1 as we go across 3. So that means you're going up 1 and going across 3. So this would be a 1 and 3 slope. Let's demonstrate here. m equal to 1 and 3. 1 over 3. So now let's we can plot this. Uh, we want to have a y-intercept is 2. So that's this point here. Let's label it. 0, comma, 2. And now we go across 3 and up 1. So 1, 2, 3 and up 1. Now we should, of course, label these coordinates. So that's 1, 2, that's 1, 2, 3. So what's this point? We're going across to 3 and up to 3. So 3 and 3. And then we go across another 3 and up 1. To there and across another three and up one and so on. So if our slope is a fraction we just take the top of the fraction is how much we're going up and the bottom of the fraction is how much we're going across. Now in some ways the slope of your function can be considered as the rate. Let's look at another kind of example. It's the rate of change. Um, okay, let's see, f of x is equal to minus 2 over 3 x minus 4. Okay, this might be a tricky one at first glance, but using the skills that we're learning, let's see if we can put them to use. Our y-intercept is minus 4, so that's here. 0 and minus 4. And from here, where do we go? Well, we're going across 3 and down minus 2 this time. So if we go across 3, we go down minus 2 to here. Across 3 and down minus 2. Remember the x, I said to you that the slope, for the slope, we can think of it as y over x. The change in y over the change in x. It's sometimes written as delta y over delta x. And in this case, you can see clearly that the slope, if it's negative, means that it's going downwards. So the other points on this graph are, let's say, 3 and minus 6. So let's go 1, 2, 3. And that's minus 1, minus 2, minus 3. Always, of course, label your axes, x and y. 
Okay, that's all for this video. Hope you'll join us for the next one.